When an ISIS jihadi renounces Islam and calls the Quran a book of fables, you should listen. Bismillahi walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd. Inshallah, we're going to speak today about a topic which is the great Islamic empires. Now, before I begin to talk about this, before I begin to talk about anything that has to do with history of Islam, in prison, he began to study the Quran in greater detail and focused on the aspects that most puzzled him. Among these was the figure called Dhul Karnain, the two-horned one, who appears in the Quran's 18th chapter and is believed by many to refer to Alexander the Great. San Antonio did not see a resemblance between Dhul Karnain and the Alexander of history, but he noted similarities between Dhul Karnain and a heavily fabulized version of Alexander's story written in Aramaic. He considered that the Aramaic version may have plagiarized the Quran, but after acquiring a copy of the Aramaic and translating it for himself, he determined that the reverse was more likely. Realizing that Dhul Karnain was not at all a real person, but was rather based on a fictional account of Alexander the Great, instantly left me with only one possible conclusion. The Quran was not divinely inspired, he wrote. It had taken Alexander the Great fan fiction as fact. Of course, I would have preferred to discover all that 17 years ago and avoided much trouble. He has therefore abandoned not only ISIS, but Islam and religion as a whole. He is an atheist and admires the God delusion author Richard Dawkins. Seeing individuals dedicate themselves to tyrannical death cults led by suicidal maniacs is bad enough. Knowing that I may have contributed to their choices is terrible.